over. So that way we can be sure to get back to you if by some chance we, we miss that this evening. Um, our session will also be recorded. And if I'm gonna, I forgot to record and I need to do that. So I'm gonna stop my share for just a minute while we start recording. And then I'm gonna go back and share my screen again. Excuse me for forgetting to do that. Okay, so um, let's see. Here are the essential concepts of what we're working with as we return back to school. Um, and in, in all honesty, we know it's been a, a very unsettling and, and frustrating time for, for all of us. And unfortunately, there are no perfect answers that are gonna satisfy every family's need. Um, we, we have to work under the advice and the guidance of the health department, first and foremost, um, but we understand and appreciate the concerns, the fears, the anxiety, um, and really frustration and disappointment um, that are involved in the, the way that we have to return to school this year. Um, please know that we share that as a faculty and staff. It was, it was heartbreaking for us how quickly things ended in the spring and, and, and we just want our kiddos back. So, so please know that, that we feel that frustration and disappointment and, and we wanna be back on a normal schedule as well. Um, we also are operating with the understanding that everything is subject to change. Um, unfortunately, this is, a, this is an ever evolving situation and so we will continue to evolve alongside. And I think what really helps get me get through some of this decision making is we're always going to let our love for our students and keeping them safe just guide all the decisions that we make. Um, so here's some back to school information. Um, we actually have new school office hours this year. That's something that was planned even prior to the pandemic um, based on some busing changes that we were going to make. So our school office hours are now from 715 to 315 daily. Um, our car drop off, and we know a lot of you are dropping off kiddos this year, will begin at 720 at the back of the building, same location as previously. I'll be happy to show you a map in just a second. Um, buses will arrive at approximately 730 at the front of the school. Okay. Classes will begin at 740. That's about 10 minutes earlier than last year. Now, um, to start our year, students in pre-K through two will be released at 115, while students in three five will be re released at the standard 215. I'll, I'll get into the reasoning for that here in just a few minutes. Um, our student release at the end of the day is staggered by grade level to decrease the number of students in the hallway at one time to make sure that we're not overcrowding buses. Um, and then those who are riding cars will be socially distanced in our gym prior to their dismissal. Um, this is a, a kind of a bird's eye view that lets you see the traffic pattern that we're going to use. Yellow is the bus entrance. This is the closest entrance to GE and, and 419. Okay, our buses enter here daily, drive the loop, drop off your kids in the front, and they enter through the front of the building. Okay, car riders come through this second entrance, the one that is actually a little further up the boulevard, closer to the VA hospital. Um, this is a car only entrance. Whoop, excuse me. Okay, it's a car only entrance where the traffic comes in, circles around the back of the building where your students will be dropped off to come into the back of the building and then comes back around the front. So we will still use that same traffic pattern. It worked well for us last year. We are especially grateful for the super long driveway and the car rider line this year with as many of you as we know will, will be coming back hard. So here's what our new attendance pattern um, is looking like right now. So all of your students, even those who have selected a completely online option, are receiving an instructional group letter. They are an A, a B, a C, or a D, okay? Um, every student in the division has received that letter. That's because our, our return to school plan is, is scalable. We can, we can be more restrictive um, by going back 100% online. We could hopefully at some point be able to just open back up, but by having kids already divided into groups, at about a 25% mark, that allows us to, to stay balanced and, and take into consideration um, some safety concerns. So you've had two options from which to choose for your students' instruction this year. One option is the online plan where students participate fully in online instruction, or the hybrid plan where students are both at school and doing some online learning. So on the hybrid plan, those in grades pre-K through two will attend every day, Monday through Friday. Those in grades three through five will attend two days a week. Group A, groups A and C will come on Monday and then return again on Thursday. 
groups B and D will attend on Tuesdays and Fridays. For those other three days that they are not in school, they'll be participating in the online learning activities. Now, all of this is well and good, except with a rather large exception um, that many of you are probably familiar with after our school board meeting last week. Our school board voted last week to actually start at a 25% capacity, what's being considered kind of a, a soft, safe start um, to the first two weeks of school. We are only going to be bringing students in one day a week for the first two weeks of school. Um, this is going to really allow us to car carefully evaluate our protocol that we put into place to make sure that we're allowing for distancing and cleaning and, and crossing all those T's and dotting those I's. It's gonna ensure that our transportation can handle the load of students um, at a safe distance. And it's gonna cut down on the number of students and adults that your children are exposed to, as well as our, our staff and folks who work in this building. So we're hoping by starting slowly, this will really help us. Um, it will be to our long-term benefit. Now, it's a little squirrely these first two weeks, so <laughs> take a look at this graphic with me. Um, because we were starting before Labor Day this year, um, it is required by the state of Virginia that if you have a pre-Labor Day start, you have to be off the Friday before Labor Day and the Monday after Labor Day. So those were already required holidays in our school calendar. So as a result of that, we've adjusted the schedule for next week, where on Monday, um, excuse me, not next week, Monday the 31st, A's will come. On Tuesday, B's will come. Wednesday will be C, Thursday will be D. That Friday is an off day for everyone. Monday is the Labor Day holiday in that second week. So on Tuesday, the 8th of September, A would come, then B on Wednesday, C on Thursday, and D on Friday. Okay, if all goes well, and we certainly anticipate that it will, beginning September 14th, we will go to the, the schedule where more students are coming each day. Starting that week, pre-K through two will come every day of the week, and three through five will start on that two day a week rotation. That rotation also exists at our middle school and high school. Um, we have really endeavored to make sure if you have multiple children living in your home that we've got you on the same schedule. If for some reason that has not happened, please reach out to, to, to us here or to the other school impacted and we will make sure to fix that for you. Okay, so in this new model, if you are coming to school, Pre-K through two students receive face-to-face -face instruction, but dismiss an hour early at 1.15. Um, that provides some physical distancing on the buses and in the hallways, as well as the planning time for teachers on that afternoon time, since they have children all day during the week. Three through five students attend two days per week and then participate in the online instruction on the days that they're not here. Um, Wednesdays are for teacher planning, collaboration, online learning, maybe some individual meeting with students, some remediation, some enrichment. Um, but for right now, Wednesdays will not be a day that students come to school. It will be a day that teachers work with their online students um, and do some of that online instruction. Okay. Instruction will be asynchronous. What that means is that the teacher is not going to be streaming live video of his or her teaching. <laughs> They're going to be focused on what's happening in their classroom during the course of a school day. Um, activities will be provided online, um, whether that be, you know, videos, all sorts of things to engage in and to participate in and complete before you return to school. Um, and students on days that they're at home will focus on those things at their own individual pace. Um, our instructional activities in person are really going to include a lot of social and emotional learning. We know this has been a, a hard time for folks. We want to make sure that we're remediating, we're differentiating, we want to meet students where they are, we're going to offer personalized support, additional practice, and whatever enhanced activities that we can to, to get us back on track from, from the time that, that we've been away. Our online learners are going to be supported and assessed either by a classroom teacher here at East Salem or a dedicated elementary online teacher. Let me explain to you how that breakdown is going to work. Um, if, you, if your student is in K through 2, their online teacher is going to be a very specific elementary teacher from within the division whose job is only managing online learning. Okay. If your child is in three through five, their homeroom teacher here at East Salem, even though they are not attending, is also going to be their online teacher. 
okay? So for example, if you're a third grader and you've chosen the online option, you will still be assigned a third grade teacher here in the building who will work with you and support you in your learning as he or she is doing in the classroom. If you're a kindergarten through second grade online learner, you're gonna have a, a specific teacher in the division that is really dedicated to those primary learning needs, okay? We now have computer access for every child K three five. Um, we were we were able to secure that for even our littlest ones this year, and our online activities will be accessed through Canvas as our division's platform. So let me explain a little bit about Canvas. Canvas is an online learning platform. What that means is Canvas is how you log in. Um, previously, we've used Google Classroom as the way that kids would log in to what it was that they needed to do. Um, you yourself may have taken a class on Blackboard or, or some other form, format that required you to log in at a certain place. Um, a lot of the feedback that we got after last spring was that while we had some great online learning going on, there, it was a lot to manage that the different teachers had different logins and you had to go to different places to find different things. And, and we really took that to heart because we want this online learning to be as simple and accessible for your family as it can be. So every single teacher at East Salem, division wide actually, will have a Canvas classroom um, that students can log into and then that's where all of their materials will be located. Um, we know Canvas is new, it's very user friendly, but to help support that transition, the division has created some videos and I really suggest that at some point after this, you go and kind of click this link and, and, and take a look um, at this website. Um, it has three videos on it. You're gonna be interested in two of them. Um, one of them is how to log in to Canvas as an elementary student. One is how to log into Canvas as a secondary student, and then one is how to log into Canvas and what you need to know as a parent. <laughs> so you'll definitely want to check out those links and those videos once we, we share this and it is posted. Okay, so let's talk about masks and face coverings. Um, based on guidance received from health experts, um, masks or face coverings coupled with physical distancing will enable East Salem to be the safest possible environment. Um, those of you who know me have probably heard me say, if your children are not safe when they're with us, nothing else really matters. And so their health and safety is absolutely our top priority at this point. So uh, we are gonna follow that advice. We are going to require face coverings. Um, so other than while eating or drinking, students and faculty will be required to wear appropriate masks or face covering when physical distancing is not possible. And I think that is the most key phrase to understand. Um, it is not our desire to have little tiny people in masks for hours on end <laughs> at a day. Um, we have structured our building so that students can be kept six feet apart. When students are able to be kept six feet apart, teachers will allow them to remove their masks. That's our standard, that when the physical distancing can be kept, masks can be removed. We will put them on when that physical distance cannot be kept. If we have to move in the hallway, um, you know, if we, if we are on the way to the restroom or out and about traveling, then those face coverings will be needed. They may be needed at times in the classroom, depending on what's going on. Um, but we will have them off and on in an appropriate manner, directed by the teacher, always guided by the principles of, of health and safety first. Um, if students choose not to comply with the requirement to, to wear the mask when it's, it's required in school or on the bus, then they will be moved to the fully online learning option. Okay, um, we realize we have a little challenge ahead of us keeping masks on um, some very little people. <laughs> We're gonna really rely on our third through fifth graders to help us set that example for our little ones. Um, our PTA has graciously purchased lanyards, so our hope is to keep the masks off the floor and, and, and around the necks and safe. Um, it is something that, that we'll be working on directly here at school, but any help that you can give us in kind of preparing your children for that will, will really be helpful. We will be mailing you a mask next week um, in your mail links at home um, for back to school, but you may certainly choose to, to wear something of your own as well. Okay, 
Um, classroom modifications, I think without question, our heaviest lift this summer has been in this particular <laughs> category. We've had to do extensive modification of our building um, to be safe and, and to be ready to reopen. Um, our classrooms have been measured and remeasured um, and using a formula that was provided for safety, um, we have determined each classroom's maximum capacity based on keeping students six feet apart. So we have some classrooms in this building that can hold 15 students. We have some classrooms in this building that can hold 10. We have some that can hold 20. <laughs> so um, class sections have been split out and balanced to provide the safest possible environment for our students. Um, we will not allow more students to be assigned to a class than the room can safely hold. Once that maximum is reached, we open a new section in a new classroom. Students will not share materials in class. Everybody will have his or her own materials kept separate from all of the others and only used by your child. Health screening questions will be sent home for families to verify daily prior to school. Um, it's gonna be a series of questions that you go through at home and by sending your child to school, you're verifying their, their health for the day. Teachers here in the building will lead students through review of health screening questions each day. We also have no touch thermometers and, and the, other, the other little gadgets that we're gonna need to make that happen efficiently. And should an illness occur, um, and likely an illness will occur, um, we will defer to the Virginia Department of Health's protocols, procedures, and guidance. Um, because again, keeping, keeping folks safe is, is really our top priority. So some additional safety measures that we have had to put into place as a result of all this. Um, sadly for us, no outside visitors will be allowed in the building at this time, unless you are a student or a staff member you may not enter East Salem. Um, if you have a student that's coming in tardy or you need to sign them out early, we are moving that computer system to the foyer of the building so that you can enter that, that first part of the building through the main door and use that sign in or sign out system there. A member of the office staff will then get your child for you or make sure that we get your child to class. Um, all of our students are expected to maintain physical distancing between classes and in the hallways. We've developed extensive school procedures for this and we're going to be offering students everything from visual guides like dots on the floor to to videos and, and, and how to's and all sorts of things um, to help them learn what that appropriate spacing looks like. Our water fountains will not be used. Um, students may bring a water bottle to school and a filling, two filling stations actually have been installed. So kids can refill those water bottles throughout the day as they would like to. Um, we're very fortunate that we have sinks in all of our classrooms. So in addition to hand sanitizer, we will also be doing a lot of soap and water. And one of the very first routines that our teachers will establish is a, is a hand washing rotation through the day. Okay, um, some additional safety measures. Students will report directly to class upon arrival. We used to kind of gather in the gym or gather in the cafeteria. No more gathering, we're gonna go straight to class. Um, breakfast will be available in grab and go stations throughout the morning. If a student wants breakfast, they, they grab it and go to class and, and have it there. Students will remain in their classroom throughout the day. We are not gonna have students rotate between teachers or to other parts of the building. Students will remain in their little pod in their classroom and any adults who need to see them will rotate into that classroom to cut down on the exposure that they have to other people. Um, I, I do want you to know, because I think this is really important, that students will have an encore class every single day, PE, library, guidance, art, or music, and they will have recess built into their schedules every single day. Um, our lunch will be delivered to the classrooms. We'll be having, having uh, supervised picnic lunches each day in the rooms. Um, and then weather permitting, time outside is just gonna be strongly encouraged throughout the day for everyone because we know that that, that fresh air is, is good medicine. Okay, um, if you're familiar with the East Salem building, um, the nurse's office has been located to a much larger space than it previously occupied. It was a part of the the main office area here at East Salem. She's now actually been moved to, to a classroom um, that has been converted into a much larger, more efficient nurse's office. Um, if a child does become sick and needs to be picked up, we have located the nurse's office 
with a dedicated parking spot and door so that um, students may be picked up using that outside entrance without parents having to come into the building or students who may be potentially be sick having to, to move throughout the building themselves. Um, air purifiers and appropriate safety equipment have been distributed and all cleaning and sanitizing protocols will be followed daily. We have daily cleaning and sanitizing protocols. In addition, with the way that our schedule is set up, we will have a very deep cleaning every two days. Um, after Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday will be a deep clean day. After Thursday and Friday, the weekend will be a deep clean day in addition to those, those daily safety procedures that we're following. Okay, so here's some upcoming dates. You probably already know about this one since you're here. Um, the school Zoom meetings are taking place tonight. Uh, bus routes were due to be posted today. At last I checked, they hadn't quite uploaded yet, but you might wanna check on that tomorrow. Um, it does have your bus number, your bus stop, and an approximate time. Um, we would ask for your patience as we move through that process. Um, on August 24th, which is Monday, a mailing is gonna be sent home um, to every student online or in school, because whether or not you're choosing to come to the building, you're still our student. We still want you receiving the information that we sent home. So it'll have a homeroom letter. It'll have a, a city of Salem mask that you can choose to wear. Um, it'll have a magnet for your house with our daily safety protocol questions to help you remember to ask those. And then some other back to school materials that we need to send home. Um, if you do have a little one, um, a pre-K, kindergartner, or first grader, we're also gonna put a car tag in that mailing. Um, typically, we would give out those, those um, not really a car tag, a transportation tag, bus tag. Um, normally, we would give those to you at orientation, but we need kids to come to school with them on the first day. So if we're sending home a, a transportation tag with your little one, please make sure that, that when they get to school that first day, they're wearing that so that we know who they are and, and where they're going and, and how they're going to get home to you that day. Um, if you are an online only student, please make plans to come by on the 27th of August. That's a Thursday, anytime between 730 and 3 to pick up your Chromebook and any other supplies that your teacher might want to send home with you. Unfortunately, we cannot have a student drop off or orientation this year due to our building restrictions. Um, but I want you to know, I, I think our teachers are the, are the most sad about that, about not seeing their kiddos face to face um, prior to that first day. But each and every one of them is gonna reach out next week to, to their class list and, and, and drop you a postcard or make a phone call or maybe link a little video to, to let you know what to expect when you arrive at school on the first day. Um, August 31st is our first week of school that begins and students will just bring supplies with them on their first day that they come. Okay, here's some contact information and I am gonna send this um, PowerPoint out and link it up on our social media. Um, everything will be, be sent out to you by tomorrow morning. This has got all of our contact information, our phone number, my email, Mr. Thomas's email, our division webpage, our division webpage has, has got some pretty robust resources. Um, I tried to pull out a couple that I think are, are particularly important. One is the Chromebook information page. This includes a help site, um, frequently asked questions, can, can put you in direct contact with somebody who can help you kind of troubleshoot any Chromebook issues that you might have. We also have a really dedicated COVID-19 division page, which outlines all of the guidance that we're following, all of the updates that we have, um, and also our plans for our individual schools that we've created this summer. Um, our last slide here is actually a link to a school opening screencast. Um, this was sent out to everybody in a school messenger earlier um, this month, but I think it really holds some important and significant information. A lot of it is what I've gone over here this evening. Um, it, sometimes it just helps to hear it again or to have a place that you can go back and, and click and hear it again if you have some questions. Um, we're going to need to get that started here in the next few minutes in order to make our time limit for the meeting, but this does give us um, just a few minutes for questions. So I know Mr. Thomas has been monitoring the chat, but he's going to pass over to me some um, additional questions. So let's see what we got here. Um, okay, first question, will Canvas assignments be posted weekly 
like the high school. Um, I, I believe that it will vary by teacher. I think that some of our teachers will be posting some weekly assignments. That a lot of our teachers will kind of um, post some things all along the, you know, during the week. If they know, for example, that your child is not going to be here on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Friday, then have things earmarked for that. Um, in addition, I think there will be some some long term assignments as well. Okay. Um, will 100% online students be able to work on their at their own pace and time during the day? Yes, yes, they will. Online students will be able to create their own schedule and complete their online learning at their own pace. We will not be zooming you into live classroom action here at school. Um, you will have those activities and can structure your schedule in the way that works best for your child. Um, when will you find out your child's teacher? That will be coming home in the letter that is mailed out next Monday, the 24th. So hopefully you'll receive that by the middle of next week. Um, we are frankly still working on balancing classes. Um, we, you know, there, there have been a lot of changes and we wanna make sure again that we don't have more students in a room that we can and that we are, we are balancing them out in the safest possible way. But that will be finalized and mailed out by Monday. Um, will students be at separate desks or tables in or at tables in a group? That's a great question. Students will be at desks. Um, while many of our lower um, love those little tables and teachers love their reading groups at those little tables, they just do not allow us to keep appropriate distance. Um, so the tables have been removed and <laughs> desks have been placed in all of our classrooms, even for our littlest learners, so that we're able to um, maintain that social distance. That's not to say that a teacher might not have a table in his or her room and work with a student at that table, but if that six foot distance is not being kept at that table, both student and teacher would be wearing a face covering. Okay. Um, are students able to pack a lunch? Absolutely. Students can pack their own lunch like they have, have done in the past. Absolutely, they'll be able to do that. Um, if students choose to buy a lunch, they will order it in the morning. That order will be sent down to our cafeteria along with your student's lunch number. The cafeteria staff will pack that lunch, enter the number into the computer, and then deliver that classroom's lunches on the, the appropriate lunch schedule. So your child will not be going to the cafeteria or entering his or her own number. That will take place um, through our cafeteria staff. But you are still certainly welcome to pack a lunch, just as you're welcome to bring a water bottle. Okay. How will PE, recess, et cetera, work for online students? Um, well, we won't be able to offer you those activities, um, although those teachers, um, much like they did in the spring, will, will post activities. Um, those things will be linked to your students' Canvas pages, and they will be able to, to access that information and um, different activities there, okay? And how do we get extra car rider tags for pickup? I'm really glad you asked the car rider tag question. Um, we are, you know, normally we would have you pick up a car tag before school starts. We don't have that option. So what's going to happen is um, the first day that you come through and drop off your child, we're going to hand you a form to fill out if you need a car tag. And if you need extra car tags, there will be a place there to indicate that. Then we will get those car tags ready for you and deliver them either by the afternoon dismissal or by, by arrival the next morning. We will get those created for you and brought out. So you will have a form to, to fill out for car tags. We had a question about medication in the last meeting. Um, we will also send out information about medication drop-off. Um, our nurse's office conversion is not quite complete yet um, and our nurse returns to work next week. So once she is back and the room is completed, um, then we will send out information about dropping off medications. Um, but as I mentioned before, our office is open seven, it'll be 7.15 to 3.15 starting next week. Um, and if you have a reason that you need to stop by and drop it off or, or have a question about that, don't hesitate to give us a call, okay? All right. When and how will we get more information about Canvas, such as your login? Great question. Okay, if you're an online student, that will come home with you when you pick up your computer, um, including your QR codes 
and the other things that you need to get logged on. We'll have that ready to go home with you on the 27th if you are an online learner. If your student is coming to school, we will give them the computer and teach them about logging in here at school during those first couple of days that we're here. And um, then we then obviously they could bring that computer home and, and entertain you with that at some point. Um, this is, can we go back to the Canvas slide? Somebody may have a question about Canvas. We'll try to go back there in just a minute. Will hybrid students be self-paced on online days? They will. On their non-school days, they will be self-paced. Yes. Um, oh, great question. Will kids share a desk with a child from a different group? For example, would a child in day A share the same desk with a child in group B? Okay, it's a great question. And the answer is yes, but with some huge parameters. Um, each child in those grades where desks will be shared has a box for their materials. Um, that box with their materials will be what slides into the desk and what they will use throughout that school day. At the end of that day, they will take that box out, they will put it into storage in the room, and that evening the desk and the whole room will be deep cleaned. The student who comes in the next day will get his or her box and then move it and use that same desk, but not before a cleaning has taken place and only because materials are kept separate um, and not shared there in the classrooms. Okay. All right, we probably got time for a couple more and then we're going to hit our Streamcastify here. Um, Yes, I have a new student. Will there be staff to help them get where they need to go? Absolutely. Um, you know, this is part of the, uh, we certainly understand that anxiety. This is part of the beauty of having such a slow start. Um, we will only have for those first two weeks of school approximately 100 students in the building pre-K through five. <laughs> so what that's going to allow us is a really strong ratio of, of adults and all hands on deck to meet these kiddos as they're coming out of the car, to get them off the bus, and to really individually help guide them where they need to go. We're going to be very, very sensitive to, to the nerves of that arrival not having been in the school recently or maybe previously at all. So we will, we will be on hand to make that happen. Um, will online only children still have access to the library? I know that Mrs. Wright is going to love that question and I know that Mrs. Wright is going to say yes. Um, Mrs. Wright, our librarian, is going to be using an online request system for library books that she will then check out to students and deliver to them. And so I'm very certain that our online students will be included in that. Um, and then when do hybrid students get Chromebooks? Hybrid students will get Chromebooks on the first day that they attend school, okay? All right, I am gonna turn this over to our school opening screencast. I am gonna offer the, the disclaimer that the sound wasn't working real well last time we did this. So um, if the sound's not working well, or if it's something that you've seen before, feel free to leave the meeting at your convenience. Um, again, it's just really something that I wanna highlight as containing a lot of great information. And if you haven't had the chance to watch it or you don't have the opportunity tonight, I do highly recommend um, tuning into it at some point. And again, we'll share all of these links with you. Okay. Um, at this point, I'm